Alrighty, welcome back to Charlie's Edition. This is part three, where tonight's show is just basically based off of what different kinds of STDs there are, viral, bacterial. Um, we've already talked about gonorrhea, syphilis. Um, we've talked about hepatitis, A, B, and C, what kind of symptoms they have. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read some more to you guys. So now we're going to move on to herpes. Herpes infections are caused by the same virus that causes cold sores. Its source is the herpes zoster virus, which causes the childhood disease chickenpox and the adult disease known as shingles. In sexually active gay men, herpes generally appears in the form of small, clear sores usually seen on the penis, especially just under the foreskin though they may show up anywhere in the body, including the face. Herpes simplex can be transmitted only during sex. Blowjobs, rimming, or merely rubbing your cock against a trick's ass can transmit it. The, incu the <laughs> incubation period is from 2 to 20 days, although some cases are asymptomatic for as long as 4 years. The herpes virus invades the skin and a burning sensation occurs within a week. A couple of days later, you'll notice a cluster of small blisters. You are highly contagious at this point. If you touch the blisters, wash your hands because you can spread it to the other parts of your body. Afterward, the virus enters a latent phase in which it goes into hiding, remaining dormant until it is triggered again. Once herpes goes away, can come back again suddenly. Uh, subsequent outbreaks are completely unpredictable. There are no cure for herpes. There are treatments based on the drug Zovirax that can reduce its effect or shorten the time of the outbreak. Don't have sex while you have these sores, even with the condom, because the condom may not cover all the sores. It may not be inclined to have sex anyway because the sores often make screwing painful. AIDS makes herpes a more serious disease. KS may be caused by a herpes virus called HHV8. No comment. And then it's terrible because some people that you have sex with may not even know that they have herpes and they're sitting there having sex with you and spreading it and then all of a sudden you get these weird bumps out of nowhere it's kind of gross so what is venereal venereal warts venereal warts are caused by the human what? HPV transmitted during sex it is as common as herpes and like it can recur it's estimated that half of HIV-negative men and almost all HIV-positive men carry it. A partner screwing you without a condom or simply rubbing his cock against your ass can transmit it. Dildos and other sex toys can also carry the virus. It can develop a venereal wart on your asshole, ass cheeks, penis, and scrotum, the whole pubic area. Your hands are likely to carry the virus from one part of your body to another although you will not develop symptoms on your hands themselves. Ew, I don't even want to have sex anymore. Warts are not usually painful, but they can become irritated and make screwing uncomfortable. Appearing as small clusters of small, rough granules, they can easily be seen and felt, especially on your asshole or... perium, the skin between your asshole and your balls. They are clusters of small, rough growths. If they are inside your ass, you'll feel pain, itching, and bleeding after crapping or getting screwed. The incubation period for venereal warts varies from one month to many months. If you and a regular lover or partner both have warts, do not resume sex until you have both been cured, or the contagious nature of the warts will lead to continued reinfecting. Lasers are now used to treat warts. You know, I worked with somebody who had warts, and it's like he always wanted to give high fives to people, and it was like, Ugh! 
Because, I mean, I'm sure they could be spread through just doing that, too. No comment. This is some scary stuff. You know, people don't really think about it, but you never know who you might meet that might have some herpes or something that you don't even see. No comment. Alright, so now crabs. Even more nasty. So let me read about crabs. The little devils are lice that are picked up during sex either by contact with an infected man's pubic hair or by using infected sheets and towels. Frottage, pussy bumping, is enough to spread them. They are relatively harmless, though they itch like hell, especially at night. They, go, they grow chiefly in the pubic hair, but they have also been found under the arms, around the chest, around the crotch, and between the cheeks of your ass. If ignored, over time they have been known to go exploring southward from hair, from hair to hair on the legs all the way down to your knees. Some idiotic gay men wait until they settle down in their eyebrows or beard. Crabs are different from head lice. They nest only on the scalp. How crabs and head lice known in which direction to march is a mystery. You can see crabs if you look hard enough. They are dark in color and usually live at the base of the hair follicle. You may catch some if you run a fine comb through your pubic hair. They mostly hang upon hair follicles and clutch dead skin, but they're not gorgeous to look at. You may also notice little blood spots on your underwear. The best treatments are liquid preparations called A200 and RID, which can be bought in drugstores without a prescription. Your physician, however, may want to prescribe a more powerful treatment called Quell. All medications come with careful instructions regarding their use. Wash your clothing, including the clothing you wore for the past couple of days. Towels, sheets, and underwear in very hot water. Be sure to tell your sex partners to treat themselves for crabs, or you'll be reinfecting one another for months. Fortunately, crabs do not carry disease. That, that's pretty nasty too. I mean, can you imagine looking at somebody's, like, pubic hair while you're down there and you see little bugs and crabs moving around? No! That's gross. And of course, when you're sitting there scratching, it's going to cause you to bleed and have sores and everything. I'm sure that's not fun. This is, this stuff is pretty nasty. But you know what? It's very good thing to learn so if you're very sexually active out there and you just be um you know having unprotected sex with people you don't know no comment so what are scabbies scabbies are common among gay men they are tiny parasites actually mites called something they live just below the surface of the skin usually around the wrist but often on the ankles, near the grind, and under the arms. They are itchy, especially at night. They are transmitted by skin contact, but can also be picked up from sheets and towels. If not treated, they will produce dangerous symptoms, but they will drive you crazy. The preferred treatment is quell lotion, which may must be prescribed by the doctor. Scabies are highly contagious. Whoa. very interesting. So basically what I've read to you guys tonight is some of the major diseases. Also, of course, the most biggest um, STD out there is HIV slash AIDS, which is pretty common. And um, I was going to talk about that here tonight on Charlie's Edition, but I'm actually going to save that topic for next week because this book has a whole section like a huge section when it comes to HIV and AIDS and so on next week's show I will read the differences between HIV and AIDS and um, read to you guys possible symptoms about that and definitely a lot of useful information 
and educational information about that disease next week, right here on Charlie's Edition. So, I hope that you guys learned a little bit about some of the STDs that are out there. Like I said, there's a lot more STDs that are out there, but those are some of the major ones. So, I hope that this show um, taught you guys, as it has taught me tonight, about definitely using safe sex practices and um, symptoms and just getting yourself regularly tested, stuff like that. So please leave me your comments. Um, if you want to hear about any topics or have any topics that you want me to talk about right here on Charlie's Edition at any time, please send me a comment, send me a request, anything, and let me know. And I will definitely get that on next time's show. So, um, definitely if you have not checked out Charlie's Corner, which I aired tomorrow, go ahead and check that out underneath my videos. It's called just Charlie's Corner. I aired that yesterday. And, um, make sure you, um, check out next week's Charlie Edition show when we, when I'm going to talk about the AIDS and HIV virus. So, thank you guys for tuning in to Charlie's Edition tonight. Be sure to comment, um, you know, some days, some weeks I can read just perfect, and some days I'm like, really? So I'm sorry if there's some parts that you may not have understood, because I just didn't read it right. But, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.